All right. As I told you, uh, you should not see my face. If you see my face, please tell, let me know now. Do you see the slide or you see my face? Just one person tell me it's, that's enough. Okay, go. Uh, okay, I <laughs> have somebody not sleep. All right. So, uh, please just let me know by turn on your microphone. Otherwise, I don't know because when I present in this slide, I cannot see the the your messages. So the only way we can communicate each other is using the microphone. All right. No need to turn on the camera. Uh, we talk last on uh, the first lecture we talk about that the star formation has started from the cold dusty floods with very low temperature like 10 up to 20 degree kelvin and then you see that it is like a magic uh, that is a mysterious way that how this extremely cold uh, uh, dust Cloth can can be very hot and started the thermonuclear reactions. Anybody remember what was the range of temperature? Just if you know, turn on the microphone and tell me. Don't write me because I don't. Do you remember the 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 range of temperature when the nuclear thermonuclear reaction starts? Okay, it was a million, no? it was a 10 power 7 degree Kelvin and, and you see that that mechanism of no thermonuclear reactions uh, finally made for us. And as example, we talk about the sun, but I mentioned we talk about the sun because it's one of the, it's one of the most important star in the main sequence and do you remember what was the main sequence hmm? anybody remember what was the meaning of main sequence stars in the hertzsprung gasser diagrams do you remember i don't want to make a quiz every time but this is the, what the other colleagues do but i don't want to make a pressure like we the a quiz, but at least uh, I have a look and when I ask a question, try to answer any at least. Uh, today we are going to talk about equation of stellar structure. What set of the equations in astrophysics, or theoretical astrophysics, you can use to study the formation of the stars? Mainly, we are going to show that these equations also can be used to explain a little bit more about the main sequence star. Those equations are four first order differential equations between pressure, mass, luminosity, and temperature. Each equation gives you the derivative of one of those quantities. The first equation which gives you the gradient of pressure. Anybody know what does it mean, the gradient of pressure? Anybody know? What is the gradient function? What does it mean, the gradient? All right. The gradient of the functions that it's the derivative of a function. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but for the function which has just one variable, yes, one variable calculus. Yes, we say in one variable calculus, you know, we are just talking about the 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 differential of the function, huh? But gradient is a little bit more generation of derivative. Uh, especially in uh, your quantity, physical quantity, you know, knowing the number is not important, you know other things. Or uh, instead of the knowing just the value or magnitude of quantity, which other parameter 
mainly you need to know. Direction is important. For example, if you're walking in the different direction, if you're moving in different direction, so the engine temperature for you will be different. If you are in the second floor, you know the temperature in second floor maybe is uh, hotter than the, the first floor. So by changing position to the point by point in second floor of the building, the change in temperature will be different. So, of the derivative when you're including the direction. So, one of the, as I told you, will give you gradient of pressure. One of the equations is nothing just the definition of the mass using the density. The third equation gives you the gradient of temperature. It will give you that you move from one point to the other point, uh, how this uh, temperature will change. By temperature, you mean we remember that the temperature was uh, was the effective temperature and find this effect by the uh, Stefan Boltzmann law, actually. And uh, the other equation will give you the change in luminosity. So luminosity, it was a factor which gives uh, you about the, how much uh, power or energy you will receive and, uh, in the specific distance source. The equation which gives you the luminosity is a little complicated because you know to know more in energy generation rate and you are going to know about opacity. So opacity is a quantity which is related to the power of the uh, any object in observing the energy. And if something is very dark, we say the opacity for that is very high. And if something is very light, shiny, and cannot observe the energy, then we say the opacity is low. So those are questions one by one I explained it by words to you, but let's go to see. Along those four equations I told you, because we are dealing with gas, with the particles, with the hot uh, medium. So in the hot medium, when you have a temperature, so you see that the temperature will be function of time at uh, distance here in the equation 1.11. But basically, the temperature could be function of time also. And rho here is the density. And k is the Boltzmann constant. And m bar is the some the average. And there is no reason that this average must be constant. It could be function of the time or function of the radius of the star. So you see that the first you it, it looks like very easy, but look, uh, you don't have the pressure, you don't have density, you have, don't have the t uh, temperature, and you don't have about how the mass of the star will be averaged, and after averaging, how uh, it will change by radius, you see? The first question is then for gradient of pressure. Do you have any question up to here? If you don't ask question, I will ask two questions. I promise you that I will ask question because I want you to be with me. I know the time is not very good that time, but we have to do this. Uh, do you have any idea about uh, first equation? DAPDR, what about the right side of this equation 1.12? What do you think about the first, uh, about the right side? The right side of equation G is, uh, what, what, what is this? Can you remember something about the right side of this equation? Hmm? This is the equation of uh, the, uh, the gravity force between two uh, mm -hmm. planets, where, exactly. R is the rate, uh, where R is the uh, distant, mm -hmm. and M, uh, M and the other one is uh, the mass. No, the M is the mass, as you mentioned. Yeah, that's correct. But the rho is not the mass, it's a mass density, huh? So 
this equation, as you mentioned, is a gravitational force, but I have to correct your statement. This is the gravitational mass, not between two stars or planets. Huh? This is the mass gravitational interaction between a central mass, the MR, huh? and a layer. Mass around the mass has a density. So in this equation, you see the the force between a central mass, a, a, a collection of the mass, we call it MAR, and a little uh, density of the mass around of that. Hmm? Or is it a little different? What is the left side? Uh, anybody know what does it mean, the, the derivative of pressure respect to the R? What does it mean? This is force, huh? But this is actually force per area. Hmm? There is force divided by area. You remember this from fundamental physics. So you have a differential pressure with respect to R. So it looks like a change in force per area. So if you are looking for the one centimeter of the area of the region around so this equation gives you the force but you have to know the density you don't know the density and you can suppose some uh, form for the density or the mass as a function of r okay so this equation actually gives you the pressure gradient of pressure the second equation is nothing just a definition of the mass you know the mass is uh, is multi, is the is given density volume as you know so look, let's to see in this equation if you see here so this is the the mass the total mass at the distance of r and four pi r square is the area yes so if you multiply that to dr four pi r square dr is the what is that the, Differential of volume, so it gives you a little uh, tiny piece of the volume multiplied to density. Volume multiplied density is mass, but because this volume is an infinitesimal volume, I mean we are talking about the differential limit, so this is actually differential of the mass. Hmm? This is a question that continuity equation. And we need also to have some idea about the temperature. So to find the temperature, the situation is a little complicated. First of all, there is no need the temperature be uh, function only radial. It could be function of the time also. So I mean, by passing the time, maybe the temperature will change. So the model can be complicated. The model which we present is a textbook and we work on that is the static temperature profile what does it mean is that we neglect the effect of the time varying over the temperature we just consider the the radius of, of stance changing or position changing position change in the temperature in the right side of the equation you have a complete non-trivial combinations. This couple error is we will find that is opacity later in the next slide. The rho is the steel is the mass density, L is luminosity, and T is the temperature. Anybody know what is this equation? This equation came the Stefan Boltzmann and somehow okay uh, sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant and this you see this is the equation of course we don't go through the solving those equations we just use some approximation you would see then the final equation which we need is the equation for luminosity so we assume that a change in luminosity 
is back to the R is proportional to the radiation. If you think about the, the rate of energy generation per unit volume, this is, we call it epsilon R, is a function of R, so it gives you the idea that how much energy will be generated in per one centimeter cubic of the surface or volume of the one. And left side of the equation gives you the gradual luminosity. We have four differential equations, and we have one more equation you remember at the beginning I showed equation for ideal gas. Mm -hmm. So if you combine them, so of course the ideal gas is not the best approximation, but you will end with four differential equations. Those equations are called four differential equations of the stellar structure. Okay. Still, we don't know how to, for example, substitute epsilon here, this is what we will study in chapter three, when you will study the energy generation rate, because it is later complicated in relation to the quantum mechanics. And also you have to know that to solve these equations, we need the things which we call it boundary conditions. I mean, the star is considered as a spherically symmetric object, yes? Anybody know what does it mean, spherical symmetry? Spherical symmetry, what does it mean? Give me very elementary definition of the spherical symmetry. Do you know? If you are standing on the one point in the universe, if you're looking around yourself, you always see the universe uniform hmm? because you are a tiny particle. So you have a symmetry around your position. So those type of the symmetry, which you, by looking around, you see the same, same picture. This is called spherical symmetry. And tell me one student now, I want to tell me that how many types of the symmetry we have in the whole universe? How many times? How many types of symmetry we have? Anybody know? Symmetry, I told you what does it mean. Because symmetry is the symmetry around the point. Hmm? What is the odd symmetry? Anybody? Uh, the things which, uh, as a student from physics uh, and in general math, have to explain those questions. Otherwise, you know, those are very fundamental. So we have a how many symmetry we have in the whole universe? You know, from the beginning, one is spherical symmetry. Huh? Symmetry around the point. What is the next? You know. Can say that you never met me. You are looking, standing in front of the mirror every day. You see one type of the symmetry. What is symmetry? Your right hand looks like left in the mirror, and left looks like uh, right in the mirror. So, what's that type of symmetry? The mirror symmetry or plane symmetry, huh? Second, second one is plane or, or plane symmetry. What is the, the other one? Axial symmetry. Sometimes your universe or your situation, your physical system has a symmetry around the axis, not around a point or not around the, the mirror or plane. So three type of symmetry. Stars are Considered as a spherical aesthetic systems. If you are looking or sitting at the center of the star at 
any point with the same distance with respect to the center somebody will feel the same physics if you are standing at the position of one kilometer from the center of the star and if somebody else standing at the distance of one kilometer from the center of a star but, but with other direction not in the, your neighbor side then you, both of them, you will feel the same physics because your distance is the same. So the best checking to that, what can you have, is that you measure your distance respect to the center. Huh? Even in a plane of symmetry is the same. You are standing in front of the mirror and you, the distance between you and the mirror is the same as the distance of your picture or image from the mirror. Your image copy in the mirror standing at the same position as you are standing. Yeah. Don't limit my thought only to the show you the slide. I want to show you a little bit of the physics. So I always talk when I talk, I'm responsible to what I say. So I when I see the symmetry I want to explain what is the symmetry. All right. The star is a spherical symmetric system. Yeah? So when the star is a spherical symmetric, you not know, you have to know the boundary conditions. You have a center of the star, this is R0, this is the center, and you have R equal to R, this is the surface of this. There is a couple in the that was a copy, and I promise you that kappa is the color opposite is the the Greek lower case is, is shown by kappa is a ability to black radiations. So it's complicated to make the model of that. So you know the particle will emit it from they hit uh, some uh, plates or some. Uh, uh, and some of them will be captured or observed by the surface. Yes. And some of them will be reflected. Okay, tell me that. What is the main factor for a particle to enter a material or not enter the material? What is the main parameter of the particle? What will be the main parameter? Who say the... What is the main parameter? I think the main parameter will be the energy of the particle, yeah? The energy of the particle is the main important parameter is the main important problem. So when the particle came with high, low energy and like photons, like gamma ray and hit a plate or material, so they play different roles. Some of the enter the material very deeply hmm? and some of them know for example, the gamma ray or the sun will burn your skin. Huh? It does make your skin damage. Yeah. But if somebody shoot you by neutron, neutron, what do you think about the neutron? What is the difference of, for example, standing on the sun outdoor or uh, or receiving the radiation in pure radiation lab, or receiving the, the neutrons from the neutron source in nuclear lab. What, what, what is the difference of those, for example, three? What do you think? Which one is more powerful? What do you think? I have to talk, otherwise uh, I don't understand that you are following the lecture or not. Just try to say something. And, and, uh, that's really very boring, you do like that. What is the difference between, for example, 
neutron, photon, or electron, what you think. If they, if you shoot a plate or material with these three type of particles, what you think, what will, which one will be powerful, what do you think? Electron or... Maybe the photon? The photon? It could be the 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 photon. What what do photon? If if you shoot, for example, a, a gamma ray, this is actually. If you shoot a, a plate of the iron, for example, or metal, with photon, what is uh, happening here? Do you know? The photon will will take some electron. Yes, some electron will emit it from the the surface of the metal. But if you shoot this. Because there is a there is a uh, scattering or there is an interaction between the electron and those electromagnetic waves, which we, you call it photon, to the surface. But if you shoot the metal with neutron, do you know what will happen? The neutron will go very, very, very deeply, even to the body of the people, animals, or him, because neutron doesn't have any charge. So not only something which is charged less. So you see that. So when we talk about how how much uh, ability have the object to uh, to receive the black radiation, it's very. There are so many things you have to consider. For example, when a radiation or photon uh, attack the material, so or which uh, particle will be uh, damaged or which part of the material or what kind of interaction? So there is a different scattering, there is a different uh, interaction effect, like Bromstrahlung, like a photoelectric, like Tampton scattering, you know, those stuff, some of you heard that in the modern physics, so, or physics theory. So uh, it's very complicated. I want to tell you that to give the idea about couple is very complicated, but how people did it, fortunately, this calculation done, and for the regime, we need for the regime of high temperature, as you see, up to the 30,000 Kelvin. So, kappa is, created. kappa is calculated by using the quantum mechanics. And, uh, and the, the equation 16 gives you the expression for kappa. So, if you back to the, this equation, so kappa is one t. So if you back here, so actually kappa is a function of rho and t. So this equation is function of t, rho, l, and t again. So there is remain just l, and for to know l, you need epsilon, and this is a chapter three. We cannot touch it now. So this equation in the 16 is not 100% correct. This is an approximation and calculated by Deutsch's Henrik Kramers. So uh, do you hear any time uh, the name of Kramer? In history of physics, do you know who is Kramer and where he, uh, he, which subject he studied, you know? If you go to the optics, if you go to electromagnetism, and if you go to the uh, optical properties of the matter, so there was the equations that they was called the Kramer equation, Kramer, Kramer. So Kramer is the that guy. So Kramer was interesting to know the uh, the optical properties of, properties of the matters. So equation sixty gives you capacity for you. But experimentally, experimentally, the kappa also uh, measured. You know, uh, experimentally measure and. This diagram gives you, but not every time, but for, for different range of energy, we have a diagrams and you, you see that the opacity for a very high uh, scattering of electrons almost is a constant. There's a, the down line, the, the, the line in the bottom, and the other graphs gives you different range for the opacity. So let's go back again so we have a four equation dpdr dmdr dtdr dlr and you are dealing with the variables which call it m p rho kappa l t epsilon and if you can write down the expressions for the epsilon which we will meet in the chapter three 
and kappa, which we already meted as the equation of the Kramer, then you hopefully you can solve those equations. And what is the final? If you solve those equations, you have to give me the relation between, for example, the mass and radius of the star. This is what I want. This is called MR diagrams. As I told you, solving those equations is a little bit complicated. I will present to you an example of them. Yes, yeah, example. Let's go and go just to see what's going on here. So this is a mathematical, is a software which is easily solved equations. So, so I just try to write the equation and row is row. I write just row. I know I can write better form, but anyway. This is the first uh, equations, hydrostatic pressures, or you can call it this gradient of pressure, or call it, I don't know, gravitational, Newton gravitation. This is a question for the uh, temperature. You have a copper is opacity, and the, this is a question of luminosity, and copper is that. So what I wanted to do is that, for example, you can replace it, the, the copper here and reduce the number of the equation or you can substitute some function of the row here and try to integrate. For example, look at these equations. I wanted to just give you the idea. So this is the equation for the row. So rho b function like that, for example, v, uh, rho b a constant for example, times uh, r power, for example, n. Hmm? A function of the r, a linear function of r. So then this equation is like that and then uh, uh, I use the mathematical, but whatever you want, you can just copy this equation here and just try to uh, solve these equations. Uh, hopefully it works. I don't know this. So you just, okay, this is what, uh, oh, okay, we have to write M and R, I think. Yeah, this is the solution. So you see that it gives you the mass as a function of the R. Huh? And then this is the mass now. Can immediately go to this equation, huh? When you have rho and you have mass now, so just go here and substitute. So this is your mass. Huh? Just copy from here huh? and substitute. Just I want to show just the algorithm. I, I don't want to make you confused with calculation. And what is the rho? We, we consider this as rho, as you remember. So just. Uh, this, so this is your equation, differential equation. So uh, how I can find the pressure? Just uh, just write it, this, this solve and ask it to solve for you and find the pressure. So pressure will be given as this functions for you. And you know what is interesting? I want to back the slide before to show you that. I want to show one thing. The pressure here, you can find the pressure. Huh? This is the pressure. This is the pressure. I write this. Okay. Pressure. You see that the point with the pressure is the radius of the star. Do you see? So if I, may, if I set this zero, hmm? if I set this zero and find that location. So uh, for example, I want this to be zero, I write zero and I want to find for me R. So, um, oh, sorry, this is not so. so this is the radius of a star. You know, this is, uh, so this analytical calculations because before the lecture started and in my email, I told you, I have a small project of some person who is interesting. Yes, the project will be like that. I will give you some row the profile for density, and you have to find, for example, the, the relation between the radius of the star and the mass, for example, which is the radius of the star and mass. And you see that, uh, for example, uh, do you want to see the, the how the pressure change, for example? I can chat, for example, the, so this is the, the radius of the star, huh? so this is the, the radius of this star. So the radius of the star is that. So, oh, sorry, this is the radius of the star. So if you back to this, uh, and uh, if you substitute these things, and 
uh, in here. So, for example, you can say that I can uh, solve this. And because C1, we don't know what is the C1. For example, if you be if you are very, uh, mad or if you don't know what I'm doing, just tell me. I will stop it to show you this crazy simple calculation. So, for example, this is C1, and then you go and the expression of pressure. Huh? That was the pressure. Let's go there and just substitute this here. I'm not the computational physicist guy. And I don't do very much programming. This I just do the analytical calculations. So this is my analytical. I, I want to do the simplified. Just I want to give you the taste of the what kind of the project I will ask you. So this is okay. For any n, it could be the the solution. So do you want to make it more simplified? So uh, more, let's just see better form because I want to plot this for you. Okay. All right. Forget about the G because it's a number, huh? And rho zero is a number. So everything is here, huh? Everything is here, actually. And there is an N here, which what is the N? If you back, we can see for our system, which I say you that and just take uh, the density like r power n huh? here. So any n you can choose it. So uh, I just get whatever you n you want. I take just the, for example, I put the n uh, two power two, two, uh, two over three. So sorry. Uh -huh. And the rho zero, of course, uh, this is a, the density. You know? It is a big number. So let me to, uh, for example, put the density. I don't know, some one, five uh, multiplied to G because G is a tiny number, yes? When you make it inverse, the rho will be very large number. So it is a good expression. So this is, a, this is your uh, expressions. And uh, this is. So you accept, uh, and uh, what is the G? For example, G is, uh, what is the G? Do anybody know? The G, gravitational constant. Hmm? Anyway. So this is my functions. This is my function. I can plot these functions. I can plot these functions. I can plot these functions if I know the G. So, and I don't want to go and looking for the, this very tiny G. So in numerical calculation, even you can substitute the G1. So if you substitute the G1, then you don't need to be worried about anything. So these expressions will be, uh, except what I'm doing, the other uh, things uh, here in the today's lecture will be very funny. So. And you have a function of r and r. What is this r? It's the radius of a star. Huh? Radius of a star. So if uh, if here I make spinning everything, I mean here if I replace it r by r multiply to x, for example, then everything uh, and make it the factor, for example, this. So then finally I can plot for you the pressure. A simplify, okay. Simplify. So the function which is remain here, forget about the R. So I can define pressure over R power 10 power 3. This would be. I can put one, and this is also forget. So this is will be my functions. This function we can plot it now. I don't want to use this somewhere, so just to make it this I deactivate that. So just plot, so plot, and so I don't know. X is going from the zero, from the zero to one. Okay, this is the you see? Okay. Who is happy for in any can you somebody tell me what is this diagram finally? 
What is this there, John? I spent the time to write this for you. What is that? This is a pressure of star versus radius. Huh? Oh. So this is uh, the things which I want to you do. So uh, it could be like, but little more harder. Anybody into? Okay. All right. There is a, except this method which I use by MATLAB, maybe Mathematica or whatever, Maxima or uh, Python or whatever you want, it gives you analytical solution and finally the diagram. In astrophysics, people working, I, people in astrophysics not very famous math. So uh, this is, I do because this is theory of physics. So. But in astrophysics, people prefer to have estimations, estimations. So what they do is that instead of the differentials, they use just a change in the variable. So instead of D, they use delta. Hmm? And they use proportionality. So they say that, okay, for from observation, we have L, which is M, like proportional to M3. And for lower mass, for example, we have this model. So proportionality, proportionality, they give the proportionality. For, uh, I mean, after all, you never can tell me you that the pressure is exactly like that. They will tell you pressure is proportional, for example, to R or proportional to R3. But here we exactly find, you see? We exactly find analytically the pressure. That's correct? Interesting. Yes? We exactly find the pressure. Uh, this method is called something in equation, so just make a simple model by approximation, you can get something from it. Okay, any question about that? Because the rest of the slide are just talking, 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 talking. There is no equation in the rest of the, we will go through the nuclear reactions, something like chemistry. So anybody, first, anybody is interested to do something project like that or not? We can start after to just really give you I will find some example I give you and I, I expect it. So you see what will be the final. I want, for example, the final solution will then for me, for example, huh, the diagram for pressure, diagram for the, for example, luminosity or temperature versus the radius. With some samples, for example, one project could be make a similar, make, uh, make a model for high mass main sequence star using the luminosity proportional to m cubic. You have to go and find the equation for luminosity and just try to solve the system of equations. So if somebody is interested, just let me know later by the email or send me the message. So then, uh, all right. This is the part of the talk. I call it this chemistry nuclear physics. So my measure, uh, measure in the was physics in back and my math was nuclear physics. So I spent uh, several semesters in the nuclear labs, so and nuclear reaction and those stuff. Uh, do you remember we talked about how the energy will be generated the nuclear reaction needed to finally to make a star? So there is in 10 billion degrees, and when this temperature is such high, so there is nuclear reactions. The first nuclear reaction will be, ah, first, the nuclear reaction will be chain. Do you have any idea what of the reaction or chain reactions do you have? And can you give me example about chain reactions? The most, the most important example of the chain reaction in the whole universe and whole history. Do you know anything about it? Nuclear reaction in the atomic bomb. Atomic bomb, uh, the uh, uranium. In the sun core. Hmm? In the sun core. The yeah, nuclear bomb, you know, 1945, then in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That was a nuclear change. Yeah. 
the uranium 235 238 will broke to the lighter elements and that during each process a little energy will gain huh? and finally it makes so so inside the sun or any other stars, so such kind of nuclear change reaction will happen. But the type of the nuclear reaction are very different. We don't start by heavy elements like uranium or uh, rubidium or something like that. We will start by basic elements, simple ones. The first uh, reaction, nuclear change reaction will happen inside the star is PP change reaction. So just proton you need it. They combine and they, the result of the experiment or result of the nuclear reaction will be a deuterium and the proton and the neutron. And there is a neutrino here also, neutrinos. Do you know what is the difference between neutron and neutrino? And or what is the difference between electron and positrons? Do you know? This E plus, you know the E plus is positron. What is the difference of positron and electron, do you know? Anybody know? Positron is exactly the same as electron. The only difference of positron with electron is that the charge of positron is opposite to the charge of electron. Okay, what is the difference between proton and electron? Anybody know? Proton and electron. The, the proton and electron. What is that? Don't be shy and just say that you know. It's, I'm not going to criticize you or your knowledge. You know, just we want to have a talk, you know, chat. Just I want to no following the lecture so the proton electron have a big difference is the mass so the proton is heavier than the electron but if you forget about the sign of the charge so they have the same charge and proton and what is the difference between proton and positron this p and e plus you know Just the mass. Proton is exactly like positron. It has the same charge, just the mass is 2,000 times heavier than the charge of positron. And you know, this new, you see the new last element in the right side of the nucleus. This is called neutrino of electron. What is the neutrino of electron? Electron neutrino or neutrino of electron is exactly like electron. Just the problem is that it doesn't have mass. Do you know any other particle which are without mass? Do you remember any? Photon, huh? Photon doesn't have masses. All right. The first nuclear reaction will happen inside the star is proton proton change reaction. You will see that. After that, you will end with the deuteron. So this deuteron need to mo do more work for you to uh, to have a lot of energy to to be enough to start thermonuclear reaction and pressure and what another story to end. So deuteron will be combined with deuteron, gives you the helium three, and the result of experiment will be also gamma ray. So it's very uh, you know gamma ray is very dangerous. Is it's it's going to the be radiative, so then the helium three again combined with other helium three, the result of experiment or reaction will be helium four, is a stable almost stable element, with two proton, and helium three again remain a remnant of the helium three, will uh, combine with the helium four give you beryllium. With the gamma and then again again you see that. So during all to the end, finally you will end with two helium. And these two helium will be just the starting for you, okay? And then the process will continue. All right, you have this picture in your book also, you can read it slowly later. So 
all what I say is uh, is summarized in three uh, part actually the first part and second part and third third part and in each one of them uh, the chance to get the energy is different for example from the first pass or part one 85 percent of this process could be happening in the sun but not all the process could happen in the sun some of them for example the the branch of second branch you see has a 50 percent just chance to be happening in the sun so, so I want to tell you that uh, we guess that the, the nuclear thermal nuclear reactions inside the stars are the same, but the portion of the energy which is uh, produced during any of them is different. As you see, the branch of one of the reaction has mostly have more chance to be happen in the so during the nuclear reactions, thermal nuclear reactions, so, and during any of the branches, you see uh, the change, what, what is the reason that you will gain the energy? The reason of the gain the energy is that the difference between the mass, between right and the left side, the nuclear reactions, if you have it, you started by hydrogen, finally you will end with helium, and you see the helium and hydrogen or light elements, so you, they they will start to make no more to make more energy for you chain reactions. So, uh, and the, the as I told you, the origin the the origin of the energy produced in the nuclear reaction is the mass difference between the atom in the right and the left side of the nuclear reactions. Uh, to know the, this mass difference, which is called mass defect, uh, you have to know the mass of the, each element in the left. You see that, for example, when two electrons are combined with two prot four protons uh, generated, you have a two neutrino electron, two gamma of the pair of the proton neutron, and four gamma of the electrons. And uh, if one has the mass, I want to tell you that. But the mass of the gamma it will be ignored, and also the mass of the neutrino. They are as to zero or very tiny. So then, uh, by some calculations, and just simply at the mass, you can get the difference of the mass. Everything back to the Einstein equations. Einstein equation EMC squared. Uh, related the, the difference, the mass effect to the energy which produce. For example, in the previous uh, reactions, after all, as you can see the steps in the textbook, the mass effect or mass difference is around 4.7 power minus 29 kilogram. Then you the equations and just sitting in the speed of the light, you can get the energy so, and finally, you have to remember that the energy in the astrophysics or high energy astrophysical phenomena doesn't be represented by the joule. If you, as you remember, the, the, we use electron volt. One electron volt is 1.6 10 power minus 19 uh, joule, you remember? And then, so every joule can be converted to the uh, electron volt. For example, this number, 4.2 10 power minus 12, should be divided by 1.6 10 power minus 90, and uh, then you will get a number like uh, 26 million uh, electrovolt, and this million can be right like mega electrovolt. Any question about that? And then uh, also carbon. You need a catalyst because those processes between the light elements, huh? and uh, it's supposed that light and uh, cannot make. Uh, they don't have enough power to generate uh, so much uh, so much uh, nuclear change reaction. So you need a catalyst. You know that better than me. So there is a cat catalyst here. This is a carbon, and carbon is uh, collaborated uh, in the cycle called carbon nitrogen cycle, and uh, that actually, and then again uh, back to the carbons. So, but the carbon nitrogen cycle as a catalyst is a, a 
Okay, during this uh, carbon uh, nitrogen uh, cycle, you have a, not only you don't have only the combination between the elements and releasing the energy. You have also decays like beta decays. Th those are very far from our knowledge. So if you are nuclear student physics, you will learn about the beta decay. So beta decay of the process happen with with some elements which they are not stable. Like for example, nitrogen thirteen. Uh, as atomic number is not stable because uh, nitrogen is 14 actually. Yeah. So when you reach, for, if you look at the uh, from the left side of my bottom, so carbon uh, enter at the cycle as a as a catalyst. So then uh, by some process, it uh, by emitting the gamma and the proton. So it uh, gain it it, it transfer to the nitrogen thirteen. Nitrogen thirteen is very unstable element. So decay, beta plus decay will happen, and again you got the carbon thirteen. And this cycle H one, the cycle of the right or the left, will help the the whole process of the TT chain nuclear reaction. And we are at the end, so I just want to summarize the today lecture. So we talk about the four basic equations we, we needed to uh, study the structure of the star, the stellar structures. The first equation was the gradient pressures. The second equation was the, the just mass continuity. The third equation was the, the gradient of temperature. And for that, you needed a model to make model about the opacity. opacity. Uh, and the last equation was the change in the luminosity. To know the luminosity, you need to know the radiation rate, uh, energy radiation rate, and that's coming in the uh, chapter three. And uh, uh, you see that it's very difficult to solve these equations, and we need always to get some more information about the, the relation between the curve parameter. And but uh, it is possible actually to study the solution for them. One of the best approximation for the opacities was that the formula of the Kramers. So it gives you the part as a function of density and temperature, as you see. But I want to mention that this equation is not, uh, is not theoretical. It comes by the observation and the by calculation. So it's a phenomenal, actually, empirical equation. So there are some best, better models, make models, which can use to calculate the opacity, but it's far from the discussions. And as you see, there is a not, a real way to get some information. And instead of the solving the equation, people usually use the approximations. Uh, for example, we get some information from the Hertzsprung Russell, Hertzsprung Russell diagrams about the luminosity versus the temperature and temperature versus the mass. Finally, luminosity mass could be estimated uh, versus the radius of the mass. Uh, for example, for high mass stars, uh, you have the first relation. For low mass, you have this. And we talk a little bit more quickly about the the process, the chain uh, reactions, which inside the start everything is started by two protons and end by the two helium, and then we need a catalyst also here. And those can uh, help the the uh, to make more uh, nuclear reaction change uh, get more chance. Uh, all right. uh, I finished the lecture, so if you have a question, you ask me, otherwise we just left. Any question? Uh, so uh, if you, uh, yes. Uh, doctor, yes. can you, sometimes when you want to uh, solve the problems or uh, solve the yes, many yes, questions, yes, yes. can you solve the, yes. Yes, yes, uh, I expected to do that. Uh, uh, let's to have something to do because yes, first, first chapter you see it was just uh, talking, 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 yes. And you see just a few equations, huh? four or five equations. And already I did some calculation like in mathematical those stuff. So yes, uh, if you go a little more, for example, to the chapter, then uh, yes, we try to solve some pro no, no. problems. I, I oh. mean, you want to uh, use the whiteboard, if you can. Oh, that, that, I don't know. Maybe I will write the iPad and then you will see on paper. Yeah, this I will do. Okay.
Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. All right. I'll start the recording so